Welcome to another episode of Hot Pizza Ass. I'm your host, Erin Darling Teralva, and on today's show, I have Becky from Legendary on HBO Max Season 2. If you guys have been watching that show, you will love this episode. And if you have not been watching this show, what are you doing? Please check it out. And you will also love this episode because in this interview, we really go into depth about embracing yourself to the fullest, um, incorporating aspects that you may be denied or, or silenced for a little bit, and then really seeing what happens when you have the guts to just really be you and do you in this world. So can't wait for you guys to hear the interview. Before we get into it, I did want to apologize because there has been a delay on this particular episode. You will hear it later on in the interview. We obviously recorded this before the show debuted, which was in early May. And now we're in late May. <laughs> it took me a while to edit this particular episode, um, but for good reason. I've been very, very busy very grateful to be busy. I was on set a couple of times, um, which is really cool. And it's my first time really getting back to work in a year and a half. So many things came up when I was, you know, going to Siren Studios, like walking in on the soundstage and like seeing this beautiful set that I was, you know, a principal on this particular project and just, I mean, and how different it was. Uh, there's COVID compliance officers now. Let's talk about that for a second. Thank God for those people. This is now a new job in Hollywood where you're a COVID compliance officer means that you are responsible for everyone's safety kind of um, on set in terms of COVID, right? COVID-19 protocol. So they are the ones that do the rapid testing for everyone before you come to work. And then also, while you're on set, they have to enforce everything, like make sure people are staying away from each other, make sure if homie wants to take a, a drink of a water bottle, they put their mask on like right like immediately after <laughs> or they get yelled at. If anyone approaches talent, they have to have a face shield on and a mask, which I mean, this is mind blowing to me because it's like I said, it's my first time being back and working in that world in those circumstances. In some ways, it's kind of hard to believe that that's our reality now. But I'm also so glad that that's our reality because in so many circumstances, at least at like working on various projects as talent, it's very easy to feel, um, I guess, taken advantage of is definitely a theme that I can talk about, <laughs> but that's not exactly what I mean in this circumstance. I think, you know, I've been asked to do crazy things as an actor, like jump on top of this building for this non-union project for you're getting paid like no money, you know, like I've been asked to do crazy things that I was like, what? No. <laughs> and I think because of everything that the world has been through, we're all looking at this different um, because, hey, there's a life-threatening situation that could possibly come out of being neglectful of potential health risks when you're at work. And I feel like now we're in a completely different zone of that. It's a different vibe. And I like that feeling because I think that everything that we've all been through has made us more aware of the importance of health, the importance of safety. And that's all good. It is all good, baby. Like, I'm really excited for what the future holds for me, for you as a listener, for everyone in L.A. And I know a lot of people that listen to this podcast are not in entertainment. They don't live in L.A. But for you, too, in your respective industries, I hope that you are feeling safe, respected, and that you are also respecting your own health in whatever ways you need to. So all exciting, all good. I apologize for the delay. That was a very long way to make an apology. But hey, I also incorporated a story <laughs> um, and a little POV while I was at it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode. Before we get started, I am going to ask you guys for the most important thing that you can do to support the podcast. If you are listening to this right now and you have not left a review yet, 
what are you doing? Please do that for me. If you like this podcast, that is how we grow. Take a second to go to iTunes, give me five stars, write a quick sentence. Aaron is awesome. Love the podcast, whatever. I don't care. But that is exactly how we grow. That is how we get more exposure. And it's really good for the podcast. I do a lot of work on this and I do it pretty much for free. So my only version of payment is writing review. Unless you want to join me on Patreon, which you can go to patreon.com slash Erin Darling, where you will be able to access extras from the podcast. Sometimes I have videos from the podcast. Sometimes I have extra discount codes for my partners or sponsors. And every month there is a digital photo drop and a personalized essay in the themes of the podcast. So you'll be able to access all of it from when I started, which was, I mean, a little bit over a year ago at this point. So feel free to join us there on Patreon. But if you cannot, show your support with a review. Thank you guys so much. And without further ado, let's get this podcast show on the road. Here is my interview with Becky from Legendary. Becky, I'm so happy to have you on the podcast. I think that you're amazing. And I've just really enjoyed watching your journey because you have really blossomed. And you know, what's so funny is I, when I initially met you in a work situation that we're not going to even go there and talk about, (laughs) it was a mess. But I remember you were one of my first people that I met there. And um, the first thing I noticed about you was your nails. You had an amazing, beautiful manicure. And your eyelashes you had really long beautiful eyelashes but also like your energy you just had this amazing energy about you oh my god thank you that's wow Uh, that's a a fierce compliment honestly i love when people compliment energy that's everything and then just seeing your rise and just kind of like you know how sometimes you meet people and you're like wow what they're doing is really cool i hope that the world recognizes their talent at some point you know and it's like it's all happening right now so I want to take it back to the very beginning. And I also want to talk about how you started dancing. Stop. Um, so I've always been a dancer. Um, I started dancing when I was in church. Uh, actually, even before that, you know, like, I've always just naturally been a dancer, but the only opportunities I had to dance were, like, really in church because that's, like, you know, the extent my, my parents were willing to go. <laughs> um and I, I feel like they knew that they had a queer kid on their in their <laughs> in their family, so they were just like, uh, let's just limit their experience to like something that we can contain because maybe like they won't be as gay if we, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we keep it within the church situation. And so I was able to do all like the praise dances and all that fun stuff, and then. Um, eventually uh kind of got tired of that went to high school and was like i want to start a hip-hop dance team because i just really want to get a little bit more free and wild and i did that and that was fun and then um college i kind of stopped dancing um but i always knew that i was like i need to find my way back to this and so i became like a go-go dancer (laughs) Um, after I dropped out of college shortly after one year and then I was like, okay, well this is fun and I'm making money doing it. So like, yay, there's that. And then, um, my two best friends, uh, decided to move to LA and, um, after they got settled here a year later, I ended up moving out here. And, um, when I came out here, I fell into the ballroom scene. I discovered the ballroom scene and um that's just become my like my safe space my my little haven and like the best thing that's ever happened to me and um from there you know just like i discovered that you know i'm just a little bit like non-linear i guess like i'm a little bit like non-binary i'm just a little gender fluid i'm a little like i'm just like a whole like queer like situation that's just like not like it just can't be defined you know I didn't want to put labels on anything anymore and I was just like I kind of want to be a little bit more free and like I guess like when I started discovering those things about myself and when I became more open to just like being completely just like 
limitless like more opportunities like start opening up for me and um yeah like um the ballroom scene pretty much like gave me this whole like freedom so now i'm not just like you know like becky isn't just like my alter ego it's more like my everyday situation i like the whole idea of just embracing something that at one point was your alter ego and then just saying no this is my whole ego how did you get to that point and when you decided to go there, like, was that ever that thought inside you? Like, is this too much? Is this too extra? Like, can I do this 24 seven? Or is this like a persona that I put on when I go out at night? Like, how did you embrace all of that? You know, like, as a queer black person, you know, like, where I come from, it's like, you're either a mask or femme, you know, or, Mm -hmm. and then like, you know, you just, I'm from the South, you know, so it's either like, they're, they only know two genders, you know, they only know gender, they only know rules, they only know, like, regulations, they only know religion, they only know, like, and I'm just like, I'm like, there's got to be more to life than this, this is so boring, this is so, like, regular, this is not how I feel, and honestly, like, I just kind of, like, got tired of, like, changing myself all the time to the society like a society that already didn't see it for me you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like i was just like why if you only have this one life like why can't i just like be as extra and as grand as i really feel you know like i'm like why do i have to contain it why do i have to control it like that's not fair you know like i don't want to go through the rest of my life not being able to have been as free as i can you know like i you know, you just think about all the people who are like DL and they're like, they're like in their 60s and they finally divorced their wives. And, you know, this by that time, I'm just kind of like, damn, like I miss out on so much of my life. I'm like, I'm not going to be that girl. Like, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do everything. Like, if I want to wear a dress because it feels good, like, I'm going to go do that. Like, if I want to paint my nails because they look pretty, like, I want to do that. If I want, if I, if I want to call, if I want to change my name because I don't. Like, I'm, I'm not that person that my parents, is, like, decided for me to be, you know? Like, I'm going to go ahead and do that and make my own identity and, like, just throw myself into the world of the unknown. And I feel like life's more fun this way. I, I'm more fun this way. I love myself so much more now, now because, like, I realized that, like, being completely true to yourself is, like... that's like the only way to like really like live life and to love yourself you know like being unapologetic Mm -hmm. being free like embracing every part of yourself my divine mask and my divine femme you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like the parts of myself that i was told that were gonna send me to hell growing up you know like embracing that has only made me love myself and has only brought more people into my world that truly love me for me you know and like i don't have to hide it i remember like coming out to la trying to like become more mass because mass for mask <laughs> is a huge thing out like just in you know the whole gay world and i was just like well i want to mask a guy and mask guys only like mask guys so like let me change myself a little bit but then i'm like well this doesn't feel natural you know and then i was just like well maybe if i'm a little bit more femme like or like maybe if i'm a little bit more like if maybe if i just like stick to a little bit more like a different aesthetic than like I might attract a different type of attention and my like I was just like no like be yourself like what what like I'm like what makes you happy you know what I mean like oh this makes me happy and like the more I plug myself into this world like fuck what anybody else likes I like it and I'm like the more that I like myself the more uh, I guess I attract <laughs> like the right kind of people that fuck with it all the way so i don't know if that was super clear this is such a hot pizza ass conversation like these are the reasons why i started the podcast and these are the the talks that i like to have with people because i truly believe that we all go through things in our lives like every single person experiences something that they need to embrace or deny and it's the story of how you choose to embrace that where I feel like you really feel the most free and live your best life and I think you're just like a perfect example of that with that whole story that you just told so it makes total sense to me I I honestly owe just like that whole self-discovery situation and self-love journey to the bar scene because that's where I was introduced to people who are as free as I am today you know 
So I want to know how many years ago did you find yourself in the ballroom world? Was it right when you moved to LA? Um, yeah, it was in the first few months, actually. I ended up going to this club, uh, Mickey's in West Hollywood, and they were having like this Vogue like uh, competition situation, and me and my girlfriends had we're passing by and we're like oh let's go in there i see some girls smoking like i've seen that on tv i've always wanted to be a part of that world like i want to see this in person like this looks lit so we go inside we get our drinks the girls are voguing down um my girl is like are you gonna get out there and dance and i was like i've only seen this on youtube and on tv a little bit and i'm a little bit too lit right now but maybe <laughs> next week and the next week i ended up going out there and competing i looked a hot ass mess but the crowd lived for my energy and I made it to the last battle. I am a dancer, like, naturally, so it came a little bit easier to me just to keep up with the competition. It was already way advanced. But um, after that, um, the MC of the night, he teaches a free Vogue class every Wednesday in downtown LA, and that's kind of where I learned how to Vogue because he ended up getting my... Um, he's like, hey, we have a, a meeting every, every Wednesday. You're more than welcome to join, and, like, if you want to learn, we'll teach you this, that, whatever, and that's kind of how I like got immersed in that scene by like taking the free classes from the cheat classes. I was just like, okay, this shit's really lit. Like I think I'm ready to compete. And when I was ready to compete, I actually started competing and winning. That's when I became a part of the scene. Like, and now, you know, I'm on a show based off of the whole ballroom scene. So how did you get cast in season two of legendary? Was that just, was it something you auditioned for or were people like, Hey, this is an amazing person in the community and they reached out to you. How did this go? It was kind of something like the latter. Um, my best friends were in the first season of the show and I never saw myself as the reality TV competition type girl. Like I just, you know, I love watching it, but like, I just never thought I would, you know, be a part of that world, you know, like, um, and I was a fan of the first season. I, like, really enjoyed the show, but I was like, I don't think I could ever do this. You know, my girlfriend told me about their experiences. I was like, oh, my, that sounds like so much pressure. Like, I don't know if I if I have that in me, you know? Like, I don't know if I could be, if I would be able to get through that, you know? Like, I was like, oh, girl, you're stronger than me. Oh, girl, that couldn't be me. I got a call, like, my phone was blowing up, like, and it was my gay mother, and she's like, Becky, like, because I ended up stepping off of the floor, because, I mean, if somebody's blowing my phone up, I'm like, it has to be important, like, what's the tea? And um, she was like, Becky, you need to answer your phone in, like, five minutes, you're about to get a very important call. And then, like, she just hung up on me, and I was like, okay, that was, like, sus as fuck, like, what the hell is this? Like, I'm at <laughs> work, like, whatever. And then, like, my, my, um my brother in the house who's also on the show he ended up calling me like back to back to back when i was like on the floor at work and then i was like okay let me stop off the floor again he's like bitch like you're about to get a very fierce phone call did you answer the damn phone and i was like okay fuck like so waited for this call i got this call from this like number and they're like hi is this becky so-and-so and i was like yeah and they're like um this is so-and-so from ca um casting of legendary and we wanted to know if you'd be interested. And I was just like, uh, sure. Like, why not? I just didn't see it for myself, honestly. I didn't believe in myself. Like, I didn't think I had it in me, honestly. Like, and I just didn't, I just didn't know how, like, reality TV would portray me, you know? Like, just, I, I feel like I'm socially awkward. I feel like I'm a little, like, weird. <laughs> Uh, I, I was just kind of shy to things like this. And they gave me the call, and I said yes. And I just... I was like, wow, like, I guess this is happening because, you know, there were some girls who I admired in the ballroom scene that I knew were gunning for, you know, a spot on the show. And I was just like, I don't think I could ever compete on that level, you know, like, against them. And then I'm getting the call and I'm like gagging and I'm over here not even trying out the shit. So in a way, it was kind of like validating because I'm like, wow, like, they really see it for you, bitch. Like, you really are as good as some of these girls think you are. Said yes to that. And um, we ended up starting filming maybe a month later. Um, we had to quarantine for a whole week in a hotel. And um, from then, shit got real, and we started competing um, to win $100,000 as a team. That's incredible. Yeah, it was lit. It was such a lit experience. Like, I have no regrets. Like, I can't wait for the world to see it. Honestly, like, it changed me so much, and it made me believe in myself on a whole other level. Like, I was able to work with, you know... Tanisha Scott, a world-renowned, like, choreographer, you know, who's just, like, top of her game. 
literally in the room with these people and like they're working with us to put together these really fierce productions and i'm getting like fitted and dressed by like johnny wuja like katie perry's uh fashion uh costume designer and I, it's it's like it's it's so beautiful like to see like you know ballroom finally getting their life in the mainstream media and like because i feel like it's like a source of so much inspiration in pop culture already so mm-hmm. for me to be a part of something so like monumental it's like it's gag it's like and mind you i started this journey because um one of the judges on the show she uh laomi she's like the vogue superstar of the world like the beyonce of vogue like they call her the wonder woman of vogue like she's literally like this fierce this fierce 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 uh transgendered woman who is like slaying runways it was such a full circle moment it was so validating i'm like wow like i'm in the room like with people who i've admired after that, I was like, "Wow, I can do so much more!" And then so much more came. So I like, I literally got to perform with B Rexa recently, and that was fucking like phenomenal. Yeah, that is so great. I loved the videos that you've been posting from the BB Rexa music video and the outfits and the nails and the makeup. I was like, whoa. And that's so funny because that was shortly after um, we were going to do this podcast. And so I was like, whoa, it's like, bam, 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 bam. It just seems like you're just calling everything in with that energy. But like, I, I feel like I'm like, it's, I feel like it's finally my time. Like, I don't know. I was in this negative headspace for like most of my life. You know, like I grew up in church, you know, with two parents who are ministers. Um, my sister's a missionary. Like I'm literally like the black sheep of my family. Cause I decided not to, uh, uh, live my life by the Bible, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I just decided like be my own person, discover God for myself and like what God was to me. And like, you know, just, like, question everything, and, like, ever since I decided to go on this whole, like, this whole me journey, you only have one life, like, stop blaming your parents, Mm -hmm. stop blaming your awkwardness, like, just, you know, embrace the awkwardness, embrace the weirdness, embrace every part of you, and, like, you know, love yourself, and then, like, you know, the universe will love you and give you everything within that vortex, with everything, everything within that, like, that aligns with who you are in that moment. The more I, like, accept every part of myself, the more I accept life and just, like, where I'm at and just stay present. And, mm-hmm. Like, the more I realize, like, doors are opening up, opportunities are coming, the more I love myself, the more I'm being loved. The more I love myself, the more things come. The more I love myself, like, it's, like, it's, just, like, shit's becoming easier. Like, life just becomes a little bit easier. I feel like this past year has kind of been, like, a video game. This whole pandemic kind of feels like a sims game like a simulation it's like that time was gonna go by look the last time i did shrooms i literally (laughs) said that to my best (laughs) friend i was with i was like yo i feel like we're in a simulation I really i was like and this was during the pandemic i was like i was like i feel like we're in a simulation like i feel like i feel like maybe like (laughs) like literally everything you just said i was like i'm like wow like this is this just seems so fake to be real like it really does. It feels kind of fake sometimes. And it also feels kind of like like the only thing that we really have control over is is us. And everything else is mm-hmm. a complete variable. Everything. Going outside, getting in your car, you know, like getting a job or losing that job. All of that is like we're kind of in control of it. But stuff can happen that you're not in control of. And then you're like, oh, shit, I'm fucked. So it's kind of weird, like going through life, it's like the only real key that you're talking about is kind of like loving yourself, accepting yourself, and then things will come to you. And then also it's it's the best thing that you can do for your own like growth, development, mental health also. And I, you know, what's so cool is that I just, I can't wait to see what's next for you because I feel like there's been so much growth that's just happened in your life in the past year. What do you want to do? Oh my god, like, I would love to travel performing, you know, as, I, um, recently I've been kind of getting up in drags, um, for these gigs, uh-huh. <laughs> and, um, that's become a medium and a way of escape that I never imagined me being a part, you know, like, I love drag race, I love drag queens, I've always admired them, I'm around them all the time, but I never saw myself getting up in it, you know, when the show rolled around, like, they had me dolled up. Um, with the whole BB experience, um, they had me dolled up again, and it'd be kind of fierce to, like, see where I can go performing in drags. Um, I kind of want to be, like, 
a drag burlesque pole dancer. Yeah, you're one of the most like beautiful pole dancers. Like I remember I was seeing one of your videos and I was like, wait, where did you learn this? I want to go to this class. Like you are so good at it. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are. You guys, everyone should follow Becky on Instagram because you have just the most fun videos. Like I love you're so free and so alive. And I just like, I see the stuff that you do and I'm like, oh my God, that must really hurt. Like, how do you jump and like land in the splits? Like, please tell me, what is the secret? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I've always been flexible. So like throwing myself in the splits and all types of dangerous positions, like those, that's nothing new to me. It's not uncomfortable to me, but like, you know, they say like, use it or you lose it. So I guess the key for me is just like staying inconsistent and stretching because like, I know, like my body will like, let me know. Like, so... I'm so proud of you, of everything that you're working on, everything that you've that's accomplished. I think it's just so great. And I'm so happy that you're getting a spotlight to kind of shine your light to the world. You're so, like, very oh, deserving, you. very, very, very deserving of all of this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> if you could give a younger you any piece of advice now, like, let's say you five years ago, what would you say and why? me five years ago so i'm 28 five years ago would have made me 23 um what would i want to say um don't date that guy um <laughs> no <laughs> but, uh probably uh where was i at 23 i was here in la save your fucking money bitch um <laughs> save your money stop blowing it on weed and like food like learn to cook like or and then honestly i, I would just tell myself like start now like everything that you're feeling within you start now don't wait just start now like i love that i'm ex i'm experiencing everything right now like because I, I believe that you know it just happens when it's supposed to happen but i wish i adopted this mindset earlier on in my life because mm -hmm. like I'd probably be further by this time, but you know, I'm glad I'm here now. But I would have been like, girl, be yourself now, love yourself today. Like, you're good. Like, yes. And be as extreme as you want to be, as, as you're comfortable with being. And like, just just have fun. Just have fun. Like, you have one fucking life. I would have said, have fun. Quit your job now. Like, just flow go with the flow do what makes you happy like opportunities are going to come, come are going to come for you to sustain yourself like you will find a way like just just start now yeah so good awesome okay so where can people follow you on your journey like drop all your social handles like all the things okay well i am they are becky uh like they are becky because those are the pronouns they uh yeah but they are becky um on ig and uh legendary season two is premiering may 6th so everyone tune yes. in watch they are becky kill it on the show and check out the bb rexa video for what is it called again the song sacrifice that's right she like just sacrifice. dropped this she just dropped this album so i don't know if the video is out but like by the time this episode comes out it will probably be there yes. <laughs> the video the video is out the video is out we performed with her for her it was her first live performance of the song um on the stephen colbert uh late show on the late show with stephen colbert or whatever um but yeah, that's on YouTube. Um, it's super fierce. It's super fun. It's super sexy. And um, yeah, like check it out. And uh, trust and believe you'll be seeing a lot more stuff like that really soon. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This is an honor. Like, wow. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Hot Pizza Ass Podcast. I'm so grateful for your listens, for your support and your downloads. If you liked this, please subscribe to the podcast and send it to someone who would love this interview. Take a second, rate and review us on iTunes. And thank you guys so much. There's also Patreon. All of the information that you need to know is going to be in the show notes. Go ahead and click down there give us a check out give check us out i don't know <laughs> and i will see you guys next time thank you so much i'm your host aaron darling terrell